Hey Clutterbugs, I'm so excited about today's podcast. You are going to be so motivated to declutter and tackle your home. So while you're listening to this, I want you to grab a trash bag and I want you to take action while you're listening or maybe grab a box for decluttering because this is going to get you up and moving because today we are chatting with Carla, the founder and creative force behind the Carla Project. Over the past three years, she's helped thousands of people declutter, simplify, and organize their lives. Okay, I've been watching her YouTube channel, so motivating, but also like non judgmental. It's gonna get you up and get you moving. So, welcome, Carla. Thank you. I am so excited to be speaking with you. I've been watching your channel since the beginning. So this is a really pivotal moment for me. It's really fun. Yeah. You said before we started, you said you've been watching me for 15 years. That makes me feel so very old. I can't (laughs) believe it's been, I've been doing this a long time. Yes. I feel like you had a separate channel or something because I feel like it's even, yeah, before your current channel, it's was, yeah. We do not speak of Malatou <laughs> 79. Yeah, that was my first oh, YouTube goodness. channel. What a name. <laughs> it was, it's a long story. Let's <laughs> not go there. Okay, but uh, but we, I am curious, how long have you been doing this? I mean, I know the story, how long you've been doing this and how you got started. Um, please yeah. share with the audience. I find this so fascinating. Well, I have been trying to be an organized person since 15 plus years ago. I feel like my whole adult life, I've been trying to crack the code on how people have an organized home. And it just eluded me, eluded me for most of my adult life, really, truly. Because I didn't realize that it's not just a problem of having too much stuff in a space. It's also the organization piece and finding a home for everything. It's also the habits and routines that you keep to tidy up the place. It's like, just because you organize it once, it's not going to stay that way. It's, it just, I I swear it's like, these things were never taught to me. I, I never learned them. I just, I didn't have a natural understanding. So really in the last few years of learning this process, I realized there is a way to have systems in place that it's doable for someone who's, who's naturally messy. Yeah, I'm naturally messy too, but my mom was like, she was a a neat freak on the outside, like a classic ladybug, but on the inside, she was a hot mess. Are your parents, were your, like, did you grow up in a home that was really organized? No, 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 no. It was very disorganized. I grew up in a home where I remember in fourth grade, I wanted to have a sleepover. And my mom said, we're, the house is under construction, so you can't do it right now, but next year. And then the next year it was like, well, we're still renovating because the house was always in some form of disarray. And it accumulated over the years to where really they've lived in the same home for 50 years. It just ended up becoming a hoarder environment because so much just kept coming in. And when my parents retired, Costco was their full-time hobby. So they were just buying things. The house got fuller and fuller. And they're, yeah, they, they both worked full time raising four kids. There was just no, uh, yeah, there, there were, we didn't have chores. It was, you know, it was just sort of a chaotic environment. Like a free for all. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I had such a different experience, but I also felt like I just didn't have the tools for adulting. I don't know if this makes sense, but like now I'm an adult and I'm supposed to know how to be an adult, except I had no idea how to be an adult. And things that I thought seemed really easy, like cleaning and organizing and taking care of a house, for some reason for me, I just couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. Um, Yeah. And so I love that you've had that same struggle of, but now, I mean, you're getting it. I've been watching your, your videos I've been trying to diagnose your organizing style, but we're not going to get into that yet. I'm going to I'm going to talk to you about that in a second. I already One know. thing I, I know. <laughs> I think I, I know I what I am. People have told me in the comments like you're definitely this. But Okay, now I just have to go. Yes. Okay, what if people said that you are a butterfly? Hmm. And I I think that's true because I love I love walking into a beautiful store and seeing the display and I love having things out when, when my home is kind of styled. I love that when a styled bookshelf, shelving unit, you know, a console tabletop, I love that. And so I like to see things visually. That's very, 
pleasing to me. So I've, I've taken the quiz I'm, I, and I agree. Yeah, that's, that's me. I like, like out of sight, out of mind, I will forget. That's what I, the vibe I was definitely getting. And the thing about being a butterfly is you're kind of in this, always in a cycle of, of like a, a cycle of tidying. Does this make sense? Because you leave things out and then you'll like go through and do a big clean and then you'll be leaving things out and doing a clean. This is normal for a butterfly. I just want butterflies to know this, that this is not like a bad thing. This is how you manage your stuff and there is nothing wrong with that. And I think when you get into the habit of maybe cycling a little bit faster, like a, a nightly cycle of maybe tidying, it makes things easier. But yeah, you're you're going to be leaving the dish soap out because you're washing the dishes later and you're going to be, you know, having the dishes that you like you that's just you got ready for the day that your products need to be out so you can see them. Yeah. And I think society and maybe like magazines and I don't, it tells us this is wrong, that everything has to be tucked away. And so it can make people who are naturally a butterfly feel really bad about themselves. And I got the sense watching your videos that maybe you thought like, oh, I must not be organized because everything's out on my surfaces. And I just want to tell you, you are organized. You just are, that's butterfly organization. And I love, like you have open like a closet system in your bedroom and you have those open shelves in your kitchen, like you are nailing what works for you. And so I just have to say that, especially in a small space, I just, I found that very impressive. Thank you. And that was really validating, like hearing about that style of organization and that that was a valid form of organization. And it so resonated with me. I mean, even as a kid, I remember I had, you know, a small closet with the sliding doors. I took the doors off. When I was like in seventh grade, I took the doors off because I was just like, I want it open. I want to see what's in my closet, even if it's always messy. And just differentiating also between being messy and having clutter, because I, I'm I'm a very creative person. I'm kind of like I consider myself an artist and it's okay for me now. I've really allowed myself to be someone who can come into a room and create a mess, but I don't have clutter because clutter is just like stuff that I'm not using, stuff that I don't love. So that, I, I also feel like that was a big wake up moment for me to realize, oh, it's okay to come into a room and make a mess. I can clean it up. But what yes. I don't like is having clutter. I don't like having things around that I don't use. That's just taking up space. That's another thing for me to try to manage or think about. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Let's talk about the Carla project because this is something else I found very fascinating. I was like, checking out your website and you really declared, like you put your intentions out there when you first started the Carla project and you had a list of personal projects and goals that you wanted to achieve. And I love this so much because I, I had a vision board. Listen, that vision board changed my life. It really did. Like when I got my dreams out of my head and put them down and declared them to the world, or at least to myself out loud, real progress started to get made. And even before I made a vision board, I remember writing down goals for my house. Like I want, and it was almost like I was embarrassed to it, say that I wanted it. But at my messiest, I, re I remember very clearly writing down, I want to have a home that doesn't have clutter. I want to have a beautifully decorated home. I want to have a living room that I'm proud of. You did the exact same thing. Can you tell me how long ago you kind of declared this list and have you achieved, I know you have achieved one of them, at least on the bottom, but have you achieved these? And don't you think that this is important for the people listening? Don't you think like declaring your intentions really has power? Absolutely. Yeah. I remember I made that list. It was end of 2021. And I had been in a real, just like a funk and a low point. I, I had, my mom had passed in 2019 and I was tasked with clearing out that home. And it, it was a hoarder environment. It took many months. So I moved out of my apartment. I moved into the home. And for months I went through the four bedroom home, the garage, you know, the house that we grew up in. And that was a huge process. It was it was somewhat therapeutic, and it was uh, it made me realize like I want to do this in my own life because I can see how it didn't start like this, but it gradually became this. And so, 2019 into 2020, those were 
very difficult years just going through grief and a relationship had ended and I was just lost. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I was waking up. I remember talking to friends saying, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't really feel like I have something that I'm working towards. And I was watching TV one night and I had this idea that I'm going to start projects in my own life. I'm going to start my own Carla project where I just work on because I need something to get up for in the morning. I need something to work towards. I need, you know, and just, I was, it was basically goal setting, but I was like, I'm going to make my own life, my project and work on these things. And I'll write about it. I had no idea at that point that I would start a YouTube channel. I was just like, I'll start a blog and I'll, I'll kind of like keep track of things that I'm working on. I want to lose weight. I want to get my house in order. I want nothing more than a clean, beautiful, orderly home. That's well decorated. That was something I'd been wanting for years and had never figured out how to do. So just setting those intentions got me, it, it gave me a sense of purpose. Like I, I, I've said it on my channel before, it brought me back to life because I was just, I was lost. I didn't have, I didn't have those markers to, to kind of work towards. And I think that's something that we all need all the time in our own lives. So that, that's kind of what got me started on the Carla project was just that. I think it's sometimes you have that valley before you start climbing back up the hill and yeah. I love that. Yeah. I, I think a lot of us dream it in our heads, don't we? Like for years and years and years, we think it in our head, but when we actually take the time to write it down, like when we actually take the time to take a dream and make it a goal on paper and then be really like intentional, put that somewhere that we, I mean, you put it on the internet, but put it somewhere where you're reminded that this is important to me because we forget to remember yes. and we're in the habit of just the day-to-day -day living. And we know in the back of our mind, we want these great things out of life, but we forget to remember to take action. Does this make sense? Like, Absolutely. Yeah. We forget. And we have to be constantly reminding ourselves. I think that's what motivation and inspiration is. It's like, you have to keep, it's a maintenance thing. You have to keep on feeding yourself. That's why like your podcast is so great because it's like, you can continuously feed yourself information that makes you like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I want this for my life. Like, I, cause I think I had been in such a season of defeat. I was really in this place of just defeat. I was down and it was like, okay, no, you still have the power and the ability to take action and to go for these things because it's really like the goal is not even the outcome is great, but it's really who you're becoming in the process of going after the goal. That's the real thing that kind of like brings you to life. So I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I never, I, I mean, I, I feel like my house is so much better. It is. It's great. It, it's very quick to pick up, but I, it still gets messy. And there are days where I just like, I just don't got it. I got my tanks on empty and then the kitchen's destroyed or the bedroom's a mess. We're doing renovations right now. I'm like, holy Hannah, this is horrible. And I feel like a disaster. Um, and maybe people don't realize that that's normal. It It's normal for your house to be messy again. Yes. But we just get back on the horse and it's easier now because we do it on a regular basis. Does this like, we got to yeah. parent ourselves. Absolutely. Like that's one of the things I realized as I was decluttering and filming it on YouTube. And I started to feel like this pressure that I wasn't allowed to have a messy home anymore. And then one week I just thought, you know, the truth is my house is a straight up mess right now. It looks like a bomb went off in here. It's just total chaos. And I just thought I've, I've been sick this week. I have migraines. I just, I haven't been feeling well, but honestly, I don't even need a reason for my house to get messy. <laughs> it can just get messy. And I thought, you know what? Yes. Yeah. It's like, it can get messy. I live here. I live here. I use the house fully. And I just thought, okay, I'm going to just make the video, um, you know, cleaning when you're depressed or sick or unmotivated. And that ended up being my biggest video on my channel to date. And it's just so like funny to me how many people related to that because it gave them permission that having your home get to a messy state is actually normal. It's, to it's totally okay. I think there's a lot of Pinterest perfect and, you know, there it's, it's important, I think, to have that aspirational content, but it's also totally normal to have your home be messy because you can reset it. It's part, that's, that's normal. <laughs> That's normal. And I think if you don't realize that it's normal and you've worked really hard and you start taking steps and then it gets messy again, it can feel like, well, see, what was the point? I might yeah. as well just give up because it doesn't stay this way. And we need to be more open about the fact that that's real life. It's going to get messy again, but we just keep going because 
the getting it clean feels so good. And I watched your video. I watched you do your dishes. I watched you throw out trash. I watched you. And I was so motivated because I'm like, yeah, I got a sink full of dirty dishes upstairs. Man, it feels good to tackle them. It really and because I've decluttered and because I have routines where I do it more regularly, it no longer takes me an entire weekend to get back on track. Now it's like 20 minutes. Yeah. And that's life changing. That is, I feel like the, the life changing effect that comes from decluttering is that what used to take me the whole entire weekend. Now I can do in half an hour. Now I can do in 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night. Like I can do my little tidy routine and get the place whipped into shape pretty quickly. And that, that never happened before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I watched a video of you decluttering with your sister. Oh yeah. Um, and I felt like I, I mean, I've helped literally hundreds and hundreds of clients in person declutter. And it was the exact same as watching you with your sister. She was actually really good at letting things go and and throwing things out, but she was starting from a very relatable cluttered space. And I was thinking, why didn't Carla's sister do this before? Like she wasn't struggling to let go, but I also think that's relatable. Like, (sighs) why do you think she was now like, okay. I mean, it didn't look like it even took you very long. You guys just jumped in yeah. and you were like, do you want this? And she's like, no, it can go. And you just tossed it in the trash and tossed it and donate. And <laughs> like really quickly transformed yeah. her space. Why the heck wasn't she doing it before? It's been really interesting. That's my current task that I'm working on is working with her through her four bedroom home. And she lives with her uh, daughter and her grandkids. And so it's a very different lifestyle than I live in a one bedroom apartment. I live with my dog. And so the, the thing with my sister, what's interesting is watching her process, because I do think there are people who have a more difficult time letting go, like hold her on, or you'll let her go or like which one, you know, so she's very good at letting go. And what we've started talking about in the most recent video is the buying piece of acquiring clutter. Or even taking free things because that that was me. I would I was like a magnet for free things. I win things all the time. I find things. People give me things, and her thing I think is the buying. And so I was telling her like this is a container. If we're emptying it out, but you keep filling it back up, this is going to be futile, you know. And I don't want this to be futile. I want us to make a dent so that this actually makes a change for you and simplifies because that's what she wants. And so I think mm-hmm. um, you know it's definitely a process in this does not change overnight, but it's getting the awareness and the willingness. And she definitely has both. So I think it's, it's going to take some time. We know we're, we're working hard. Some weekends we worked the whole weekend. We did the garage and that was a two day affair. That was a massive, massive thing to tackle. And then the other day I was there and we, we were both so exhausted. We just sat down for 20 minutes and we set a timer and I just said, let's just do 20 minutes. And we filmed that. And it's like, sometimes that's all you can do. You can sit down for 20 minutes and pull up a chair. We didn't have the energy to stand. We're like, let's just sit in the hallway surrounded by the stuff and just make decisions one at a time of what you want to keep, what you want to let go of. And I think she is a really good example because she's so relatable in the life that she's living. And also, you know, over the last few years, a lot of stuff changed for everyone during the pandemic. And she really became interested in being prepared with the food and the pantry. And that just took over the house. So it, it spiraled, you know, and so now she's kind of uh, making amends for the choices she was making a few years ago and, and like realizing, OK, I can't let this take over my home and my life. I'm going to get my life back. Yeah, I noticed she had a lot of good intention clutter. So she was like, I was going to make vegan cheese out of this. I was going to make my own mustard. I was going to do like she's got a lot of I'm going to do all these awesome things. But she obviously doesn't have the time, the capacity or even really the want to do those things. This is so relatable, right? Because we're at the store and we're like, I'm at, look at this. I'm going to be an amazing person today and do like these crazy things. Yeah. And we buy the supplies for it, but then we're not actually, I feel like she's not a making her own vegan cheese kind of person. (laughs) That is, I've never heard good intention clutter, but that is exactly what it is. It's like, oh, paved with the best of intentions. And I I have, we've all been there. We have all been there. And those things that you buy in the moment with this idea and it's just an idea, but then it's like the actual steps you have to go through to execute it. 
you know, breaking that down into those little steps, who, who has the bandwidth? Who has the bandwidth? Like she works full time. She's got grand, you know, like all of us, just full plate. And you're really going to go and make your own mustard? <laughs> like that's not going to happen. <laughs> It was cute. She's so yeah. cute. Yeah. I, I also loved like watching that. I, I realized, and, and everybody listening to this podcast, as you're listening to this podcast right now, do you know why Carla's sister made such a huge progress in like 20 minutes in her kitchen? Because she set a date with herself and Carla was there, but you don't need a Carla. You don't need a Cass. You're just like, right now I'm going through my stuff and I'm yes, knowing I'm yes. Do I want this or no that I don't. So as you're listening to this, get in a space and start making decisions. Don't pull everything out and make a mess. You don't have to make big piles. You just have to say, you have to set your intention. Like we talked about earlier, right now, my intention is to declutter for 20 minutes to get things out of my house forever. And that is powerful. That's how you actually, you make a date with yourself. You don't wait till you feel motivated. You make your own freaking motivation. So right, if you're listening to this podcast, sitting on your butt, get up, friends. Get up, grab a bag, grab a box, and find 10 things to leave your house right now. Yeah, and that's what it, what it comes down to is that action piece. Because a lot of times people will say, well, how do you do this? How do you do that? And it's ain't nothing to it, but to do it. You have to sit down. And just pick up one item. You pick up one item. I think that's so important. One item and you make a decision. It's like, don't pass go until you've made a decision on that one item and then go on to the next. And it's it starts to pick up. Like you said, you can be 10 items. You do that every day for a month and you got quite a few things out of your house. Yeah. And I have ADHD, so I forget to remember. So I set alarms for myself a lot. Like every night, do your 10 minute tidy up. And they're so annoying. Okay. When the alarm goes off, I'm like... I'm like, quit nagging me, phone. You're the worst. You're like an annoying parent. Like, I know I got to do it. But honestly, I, pro- I I don't think I would without yeah. those reminders. I would forget to remember, just like the intention, setting your intention. So, okay. I would love to hear your advice for those listening who are feeling just like you were in the video that you posted that I love so much that has like almost a million. Listen, you have like 700,000 views on that because it's so good. So you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling stressed, you're looking around and you're like, whoa, this place looks like a dump. What would you tell somebody who's feeling that right now? You know, the ironic thing is it's like, it's actually just accepting it. That helps me get off the couch. Cause whenever I put pressure on myself, it backfires and I just create resistance when I'm like, I should be doing this. I should be cleaning. I shouldn't be resting. I should be getting up and do it's just like, okay, no, I'm going to let, you know what? It can stay like this forever. I never have to clean this up. I'm just going to let it be how it is. Like I don't, if I never touch this house and it just stays like a museum of mess, just like give yourself permission and allowance. And then from that place, a lot of times, once you allow something, then, then I'm like, okay, I guess I could wash the dishes for five minutes, like five minutes. And then once you, it's that start, it's just starting is the hardest part of everything. Like going to the gym, the hardest part is just walking my butt down to the freaking hit class that I started taking. And then once I'm there and I get in the motion of it, it's like, okay, I just tell myself, I just have to show up, just show up. So show up at the sink, show up with the trash bag, you know, five minutes, but then momentum takes over. And it's like, once momentum takes over, you've got, you've got like an assistant with you. It's like you and momentum and things start kind of flowing. So I just, I think acceptance and allowance and not putting pressure on yourself. And then from that place, usually if you say, okay, I can do something for five minutes, it's a good place to start. I know you've been doing the whole working out fitness, losing weight thing too. I'm going to tell you, there is a lot of things in my life that I can just like, oh, I only got to do it for five minutes and I get started, whether it's cleaning or whatever it is, gardening. I cannot get the working out thing. I have like a block here. Mm. I don't know what it is. I have a sugar addiction. I have a drawer here filled with chocolates and candies. Um, Why can't I get this? And like, do you have a secret? Give me your wisdom because I am a sugar addict. I'm a sugar addict totally through and through. I sugared my way up to 250 pounds and I'm 50 pounds down and I I'm still on this. I feel like it never, once you have an issue with food, weight, the whole thing, it, it's like eternal maintenance. You just like always have it kind of part of your, part of my makeup. 
And the working out thing, I feel like there's like a few mental tricks because I was putting all this pressure on myself to do the whole workout thing. And I sometimes I just tell myself, just show up. Even if you walk so slow on that treadmill or you are just lifting air weights, just who cares? You showed up for the class, you know? So that's one thing I'll do. But also I realize I love to walk. So I walk my dog and I count that as that counts. Like sometimes there's that just counts. things you naturally do. Cleaning your house, that counts. <laughs> like that is a workout. A workout doesn't have to be an official thing. There's a lot of things that's just being active in our lives that is totally enough. You know, it's like if you're if you're up on your feet and you're moving around, that's being active. That counts. Yeah, okay. I know. I know. I think it's I think it's my mental block of like, I hate it. I hate it. And so I guess I, I clean the house. I can count that. I hate walking. I don't know why you like walking. Listen, I love I it. Hate. That's like the one healthy habit I was born with is I, I love water and I love walking. Like those are the oh two. Oh God, I hate <laughs> both of those things. Water tastes like dirt and walking seems horrible to me. I will it's I will circle time. the parking lot 10,000 times to have to walk less. I, I bat my poor dog. I have this like with ball throw. And then if oh, she yeah. doesn't get it, I'm like, well- I'll just go get the other ball. I have like a pack of balls. I won't even walk to get the ball. I'm terrible. Carla. Okay, fine. I know, I know it's the same. It's the same solution that it is for your house, for cleaning, decluttering. It's like, let go of the expectations, let go of the pressure and just take action. But sometimes that really is easier said than done. I think what I need is an accountability buddy. Oh, and maybe you at home listening to, you might need to like your, your, your accountability buddy to your sister and your friends that you're helping declutter. I might need an accountability partner when it comes to fitness. Even if it's just a friend who calls me and says, I'm going to talk to you, but only when you get your butt on that treadmill friend. Yes. That, and that is so chat true. On the phone. I have two friends who are going to the same fitness place as me and we text each other. Okay. I'm going on Tuesday. Okay. I'm going. So the accountability part, huge. Even sometimes like rewarding yourself. Cause I, I like going for my walks. I'll listen to a podcast. I'll listen to an audio book, like finding something that makes it enjoyable. Or I think like, like you said, the accountability, that accountability is huge. Yeah. I, I had basically public accountability when I started my YouTube channel. I'm like, that helped me when people say, Oh, I cleaned with you. I decluttered with you. I'm like, I, you guys kept me accountable because it made me show up week after week to keep making progress. So yeah, accountability, it's huge. I feel the same way. Like my YouTube channel it helped me show up for myself because it wasn't just, sometimes it's really hard to do it for yourself, but it's really easy to do it for other people. So yeah. I'm like, I'm going to help someone else declutter today by decluttering my own space. So maybe I need to start a fitness channel. No, stop it. No, that's too far, too far, Cass, too far, too far, too far. But I can have my friend call me uh, every day and be like, all right, you got 15 minutes. Let's have a conversation. We'll gossip about our husbands, but your butt better be on that treadmill while you do it. And maybe you listening at home have a friend that you can like call and you're doing your dishes while talking to them or you're decluttering or you're tidying and they are holding you accountable and you are holding them accountable. Maybe this is what's going to work for us, friends. You if have a we just at home? can't seem, I do. I have a home gym. Oh, you have a home gym, honey. You are. Oh, yeah. That's you. Have your friend call you and really put you on the spot. Fifteen minutes. I know. Gossip time and just oh, that's that's amazing. You don't even have to leave your house. No. <laughs> You're like, no. I just I dust that treadmill. I dust it from time to time. <laughs> I know. I feel like I decorated my home. home office. It's usually I clean like a, my um, home office. You put like clothes on it. it. Usually ends up a clothing rack. Like every equipment, piece of exercise equipment I've ever seen in someone's home. So yeah, I, I'm sure. I, I don't. I don't think I would use like an elliptical if I had it. I don't know. I just uh, yeah. I think I need to do the same thing I did with my home. But anyways, I'm I'm getting off topic here. I find you so, you know why you inspire so many people and motivate so many people? Because it's realistic. Mm. You're you're just like, you're real and you are kind and you are just so non-judgmental. And I appreciate that. I am a huge fan of the Carla Project now. So, so just thank you so much for being here. And I want all my listeners to head over to your YouTube channel. The Carla Project with a C. And yeah, watch the videos. 
you are going to get up and you are going to get moving. And Carla, can you tell people you you have a gift to give to people? Can you share a little bit oh, about that? Yes. And I, I just want to thank you so much for having me on because watching you over the years, you've inspired me so much. So when I got the chance to come on here, I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is a little dream come true for me right now. So thank you really for having me on here. And you're you're just such a light really for years. It's just been awesome to watch your, your whole journey unfold. Um, so I am, uh, you can find me at the Carla project and I have a five day challenge. That's really helpful for getting people motivated and getting them started. If you're feeling overwhelmed or stuck and you can go to the Carla project.com slash challenge, it's totally free and you'll get a daily prompt in your email for five days that, and with a video that kind of walks you through a whole, uh, challenge to kind of get you, get you going. Yeah. So listen, if, if do it right now. Do it right now, friends. As you're listening to this, she's going to hold you accountable. She's going to be your accountability buddy. And um, you're going to have a more simplified, more decluttered, more beautiful home in just five days. So like, you have nothing to lose. Yeah. Jump over there and do this right now. And thank you, Carla, so much. I love spending time with you. I'm feeling motivated right now. I think I'm going to go walk for 15 minutes. I'm like, <laughs> I'm feeling the mojo, friends. Okay. I'm feeling it. This is good. I'm going to take advantage of it while I feel it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Carla. And I'll see you guys next time.